Hello there, my fellow Imperial Commanders, and welcome to another video about the lore of Warhammer 40k. Today's episode is one of those more unusual ones, so to speak, that doesn't belong in any specific category or playlist. Think about the likes of Food and Drink or Bionics in the Imperium. Today's episode was made at the suggestion of one of my Patreon supporters, and it has everything to do with Imperial fortifications, as in walls, bunkers, and that kind of thing. There wasn't a lot of lore behind this topic, but thankfully there were some artworks of these miniatures, so we're not going in blind. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about Imperial fortifications, shall we? The Aegis Defense Line An Aegis Defense Line is an Imperial barricade built from crenellated armored sections that link together into a solid shield wall. Their simple design means they can be built and deployed at very great speed, lending them the nickname of Instant Fortresses. They are ideally suited for commanders wishing to hold ground in enemy territory or establish defensive perimeters until such time when larger, more permanent fortifications can be constructed. An Aegis defense line can be protected by heavy weapon emplacements such as a quadruple autocannon for anti-infantry protection or for anti-air defense an Icarus pattern last cannon. The Aquila Strong Point the Aquila Strong Point is a massive fortification, often used as a bastion in Imperial defensive battle lines. Each one consists of a munition silo, topped by a large turret housing a huge macro cannon that can be used for artillery bombardments of the enemy line, and also four emplaced heavy bolters for anti-infantry defense. The munition silo allows the Aquila macro cannon to fire special quake shells, each of which measures several Terran feet in length and has a powerful charge that causes the shells to reach hypersonic velocity when the macro cannon is fired. One of the most devastating and dreaded weapons in the Imperium's vast armory is the Vortex Missile. A variant of the Aquila Strong Point houses no less than seven of them and is filled with complex targeting arrays to guide each one to its unfortunate target. When the missile strikes down, a large void is torn in the fabric of space-time, creating a swirling maelstrom of warp energy that utterly destroys anything that lies within its radius of effect. The Defense Laser A defense laser is a very large Imperial laser weapon, commonly used as a static, planet-based anti-starship defense by Imperial planetary defense forces. Due to its power consumption and sheer weight, it cannot be installed on a ground vehicle of regular size. It is normally only mounted on fixed emplacements or extremely large weapon platforms like a Battle Titan. The immense Imperator-class Titan is capable of mounting one of these as an anti-aircraft weapon. The average length of a defense laser's main lasing chamber is over 15 meters, with an overall weight of many tons. A defense laser is of little use against ground-based targets, as its practical minimum range was nearly a Terran mile at ground level. The largest defense lasers use vast reservoirs of plasma-based energy, blackening out entire local power grids for miles around their emplacement each time they fire. The blinding red blasts unleashed by a defense laser are so powerful that they can breach the atmosphere of a planet and engage targets in low orbit, making the weapon invaluable when repelling alien invasions or other planetary assaults. Even a glancing blow from a defense laser can be enough to drive off even a void ship up to cruiser size once the vessel's void shields are brought down. A smaller escort-class vessel may even be cut in half by the blast, if struck by a direct hit. By void ship standards, these are classified as lance weapons. 
Although able to project their powerful beams hundreds of kilometers outside of the planet's atmosphere, planet-based lasers require even more power than ship lances to compensate for the diffraction of the energy beam caused by firing through the atmosphere. In many cases, the bulk of the defense laser silos supporting machinery is built underground. Adding the protection of hundreds of feet of rock to the meters thick armored walls of the facility above. Defense laser installations are usually protected by a garrison of infantry and multiple turrets, which have twin linked autocannons emplaced upon them to serve as entire defense. The Fortress of Redemption This is a towering imperial bulwark against the ravages of planetary invasion. Each one is virtually impervious to conventional firepower, and the lower levels, bunker annexes and sub-crypts can house entire platoons of infantry. First used by the Astartes of the Dark Angels Legion during the days of the Great Crusade, they have since been used by every military force in the Imperium, and proven very valuable to its defense. A fortress of redemption is adorned with symbols depicting angels of death and the skulls of ancient heroes. This gothic grandeur of the unyielding edifice is matched only by its uncompromising and efficient lethality. Nestled within its armored walls, a fortress of redemption houses a twin-linked Icarus pattern last cannon capable of destroying aircraft, a missile silo outfitted with Fragstorm and Crackstorm missiles, and a profusion of four heavy bolters to repel ground-based invaders. The Imperial Bastion This one is an imposing edifice built from foot-thick ferrocrete and the remains of faithful servants of the Imperium. As they are relatively easy to construct, some planets boast entire networks of such bastions, which can span entire continents. Built to withstand orbital strikes and artillery bombardments, there are very few weapons capable of raising them in a single blow. It is with good reason that such fortresses often form the cornerstone of a planet's defensive strategy. Bastions afford their defenders commanding fields of fire. An Imperial infantry unit garrisoned within their protective walls can unleash murderous volleys with little fear of reprisal. Four emplaced heavy bolters jut from a bastion's every wall, spitting death at any foes that dare approach. Additional weapons like the Icarus pattern last cannon for anti-air defense and a quadruple autocannon mount may also be present depending on the tactical need. Only the most determined assault is likely to shift troops from such a fortification, and few who brave an Imperial Bastion's guns ever reach its walls alive. The Imperial Strong Point An Imperial Strong Point is a military fortification that combines several different types of Imperial fortifications to produce a potent and static defensive position. An Imperial Strong Point consists not only of just one bastion, but several of them, protected by an outer perimeter of Aegis defense lines. The fortification's already formidable firepower is typically bolstered by an array of Icarus pattern anti-air weaponry to guard against enemy air threats. As effective at knocking aircraft out of the skies, as the bastion's heavy bolters are at cutting down infantry. When fully manned, an Imperial Strong Point and its garrison have enough firepower to stop an opposing army dead in its tracks, and there is no foe that can overcome its defenses with a frontal assault without suffering horrendous losses. The Wall of Martyrs Bunker A Wall of Martyrs Bunker, also called an Imperial Bunker, is a type of standard fortification deployed by the forces of the Imperium. These are built to protect troops as they defend strategic battlefield locations. Like other Wall of Martyrs fortifications created by the Imperium, the raw materials of the bunker are also intermixed with the bones of Imperial heroes to provide a blessing to the defenders. These bulwarks can withstand an impressive amount of firepower, but they typically lack automated weaponry systems of their own. As such, they must be garrisoned to provide effective defense, 
Yet, as many enemy commanders have learned at their cost, a single fire team protected behind a bunker's walls can reap a very heavy toll on approaching enemies. Many Imperial bunkers are built as forward observation posts, and are often equipped with extensive Vox units and communications arrays. Typically constructed on sites with commanding views, the better to monitor the movement of enemy units, the bunkers are especially valued by frontline Imperial Guard officers, who prefer to issue orders, direct artillery strikes and coordinate troop deployments from the relative safety of an armored fortification. Wall of Martyrs bunkers can be upgraded to mount an Icarus pattern last cannon for anti-air defense, or a quad autocannon for anti-infantry suppressive fire. The Wall of Martyrs Firestorm Readout Individual Firestorm Readouts are primarily constructed to protect strategically important objectives from aerial attack and to provide a base for a garrison of troops. With its fully automated batteries of quad Icarus pattern last cannons, any objective protected by a Firestorm readout will not fall to a sudden aerial bombardment, and can hold out against a sustained assault until reinforcements arrive, while providing shelter for any infantry deployed to protect them against ground-based sorties. It combines devastatingly effective armaments with a sturdy bunker complex. While typically equipped to provide anti-air support, some instead sport a range of Punisher Gatling cannons, quad autocannons and battle cannons to guard against more typical ground attacks. In either case, they are usually constructed at regular intervals along a Wall of Martyrs defense line, providing an interlinking curtain of firepower that is next to impossible for the enemy to get past. The Wall of Martyrs Defense Network this one often forms the linchpin of an Imperial Army's defensive strategy, and is typically built to protect key battlefield objectives. Comprising several armored fortifications and interconnected by an arterial series of trenches, defense lines and weapon emplacements, it can take a fully equipped army several months of grueling siege to blast, bombard, dig and burn a truly determined opponent out of these defensive positions. At the heart of it will be a single fortification, typically a bunker, which acts as a command post for the entire defensive network. Imperial Guard generals and Space Marine officers can utilize the bunker to coordinate the deployment of reinforcements to bolster any section of the network that is hard-pressed by the enemy attack, while simultaneously directing the firepower of heavy weapon emplacements to throw back and repulse the advance of the foe. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about some of the fortifications of the Imperium, or at least the ones I found a decent amount of lore on. So, what are your thoughts on these kinds of defenses? Do you think they're effective, or they could be improved? Did you ever use or own such fortifications in your own games? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor protects.